Hello guys and welcome back to the Isle of Wight. We're up to episode 31 now and boy are we travelling fast now. It seems we have made so much progress ever since we completed that seafront. It really has completely changed the whole look of this Shanklin region and today we're going to carry that on. But before we do so let's have a quick check back at what we did last week and have a look at a few of your comments. As always, I am truly grateful for any comments you leave, whether it's criticism or whether it's ideas for the future. Please do keep them coming. Both Aggie Boy and Archie both asked if we could be working on some more larger towns and cities in the future. Now, Shanklin isn't actually one of the biggest cities or towns in the area. There's much larger places, so we could look to venture out there. We'll see how it all goes. but. If you have any ideas, do drop them down in the comment section of what you want to see in terms of the next city stroke town from the island. Rob says, cool looking cliff lift, great way of using the footpaths to make it functional, adding the hotels and houses really brings the cliff area together. And I totally do agree, that really does change things. And that's what I was trying to get at in the last episode, that the skyline sort of horizon view we're gonna get eventually is going to be an absolute killer and again thank you rob for your submission into the farmhouses last week a fantastic addition this comment really had me laughing high voltage 3r said not sure when you got rid of the ridiculous loud bark in the intros but thanks <laughs> and that was something we did have for quite some time not sure when i got rid of that i think it was quite a long time ago but yes you don't have the bark anymore <laughs> And finally, we had this really nice comment from Lodge. Sorry if I pronounced that completely wrong. I've discovered your channel and I completely love it. I like the way you communicate with the community and I really enjoy the series. I was looking for some UK series and I found the perfect example. See you in the next video. Now, these are the things I absolutely love to see and read. I really do. I'm so glad that I gave you some inspiration into your next build. Please do make sure you share. Jump into the Discord as well, guys, and share your builds. Anyway, let's get back into the video because we've already started building on screen as you can see now and this episode is going to be a lot of building up a lot of placing of houses it's going to be a big residential build up episode so nothing majorly exciting going on in this episode in terms of a amazing different sort of a build but we need to get these down we need to get some high street built we need to get some of the community going around this area which will then obviously eventually get more people and sims moving around this whole segment of the map which is what we are aiming for here so this is going to really give us a big spike in terms of people moving in and obviously activity things going on so that is the plan for today's episode we're going to be working on a few of the high streets adding in some more of the houses and just making things look a bit more realistic and just grow in this area which is always going to be the key part to this build so the recent comments and questions to you guys over the last couple of videos have been all about transportation on the island. We were looking at a few ideas on how we can implement those and what we do want to see. So the buses, certainly as you can see from the comments flicking up on the screen now, buses are a big thing that people want to see, bus routes. So the decision is how and where do we do this? Do we make our own bus routes up? Or do we try and keep to the actual proper Isle of Wight bus um, sort of routes to do so? Now, I'm not sure how easy it's going to be to find the exact routes, but I'm sure we can use a bit of Google map work to try and work out if the placements are right. Not sure which way we'll go yet. I think it's going to come down to an episode of where we just sit down and focus on that. And um, yeah, let's try and work out what's going to be working best. It might be a case of we need to use the game's mechanics to work out where we put the buses to bring the people into the zones that aren't getting people in, that sort of thing. Having a few extra bus um, stations near some of the commercial areas to make people, well, allow people to go to work. Not exactly sure what in terms of buses, but we'll get there. We will definitely get there. And a big, big thank you to everyone who has been posting links from the Steam Workshop um, about which buses are best suited. Because like I said, I don't really know what buses go around on the island. I've obviously seen buses go around, but I I simply can't remember which ones or what type. 
should be on the island. So a huge thank you to everyone who has been helping me with that and all the links you posted. We'll um, certainly get the right one or the best one we can do for the area put down as soon as possible. That will um, certainly make things feel and look a bit more realistic having some uh, buses going around. But also, as you can see here on screen, we have got this train line. So this is the Shanklin end of the line, which will pass all the way over to the ride um, station as well. So the two are connected together. So we can obviously have a train going back and forth, which is perfect. Um, and we're gonna plan to do an episode purely just on this train station, making it look pretty, making it look a bit more realistic and obviously then detailing it and making sure it works properly. Again, I'm going to be asking you guys for the links of some of the trains and carriages, etc., that we can put into this build because, again, I am not sure what to use. Um, I know some people have said, or I think I read, that they use some of the old uh, London Underground trains to go in there. But yeah, I'm going to need a little bit of help on the <laughs> the trains as well. So, if anyone does have a good steam workshop link for a suitable train let me know and we'll get that in there as well um, and yeah we'll just try and get things looking better um, and i think the public transport is certainly key to that um, and i also remember reading one of the comments about adding some of the taxi rinks as well um, that's not something i even thought about doing so yeah i'm going to look into that um, and I know we can change which vehicles are as taxis, so perhaps we'll obviously change them away from the traditional game yellow bright taxis. And we'll see if we can get some of the uh, maybe London-esque um, cabs in or maybe more just a certain vehicle. We can class it more as an Uber as opposed to um, a taxi firm, which we'll see which one works better. So like I touched on in the previous video, I don't want to go too heavy in terms of detailing this housing estate or this whole um, residential area. One, because it takes a hell of a lot of time. Two, it's going to really kill the frames. And three, I just don't find it enjoyable. <laughs> um, I mean, that's one of the things that I've learned on City Skylines. If you don't enjoy something, do it in a fashion that you can enjoy it. And whilst I love building, I love detailing, there's certain parts of building that I just don't find as enjoyable anymore. And it's building up these big areas of housing areas. Um, the way I play the game, I almost class these houses as more of a backdrop to other little aspects I'm working on. So for example, a certain area I'm working on, I just like to detail that one bit, make it look all as pretty as possible, make it look realistic and detailed. And then the housing in the background would just be a very nice backdrop for the rest of the build. And that's just one thing that I personally like to do. There are certain areas that I will detail a lot more heavier, but that's how I'm gonna play this area. So we won't be seeing a huge amount of detail, but it will be detailed enough for it being acceptable. For those of you who have been following the channel for quite some time, you'll know that recently we have been looking at the opportunity to allow you guys to build something for the series. Now, I decided on a farmhouse because it's a relatively small build and quite easy for me to deploy on the island. And, well, I wanted to get you guys involved in the series a little bit more. So if you are interested in building something like this, check out the description details below on how you can do so. This week we have a creation by Joe Keats. Now Joe has really put down a fantastic build here. What I love about this is it's almost segmented into three sort of areas. You've got the farmhouse itself, you've got the building where people live, and you actually have a little barn area in the corner there with the combine harvester and some hay bales. But not only that, there's these segmented um, sort of plots of land as well. One of them looks like it's um, fertile and being used. The other one, perhaps it's dormant or it's another little area. Perhaps it's more of a garden for the actual housing itself. But what I love about all of these builds is each one tells a different story. And I bet you anything, the story you're thinking when you're watching this is different to mine. And that's what's so magical about these builds. So please, if you are interested, jump into the Discord and drop me your creations.
So next up, as you can see, we are just expanding more and more. I'm trying to copy some of the designs of the Shanklin area. Now, you'll notice these are not exact. I'm not copying it like for like. I'm not going into that much detail in this segment. I'm just trying to map out as close as I can and copy in some of the road network designs that are in this location. I did think about doing it like for like, but with the way that I've been building, and the fact that it's quite difficult to keep a one-to-one -one scale because I haven't been thinking about doing it like that. It wouldn't have worked in this scenario. So we are just, like I say, just using a segments of Shanklin and just creating it and making sure we can fill the gaps nicely because that's one thing that is quite troublesome when you're building um, a big residential area is sometimes you get a few locations a few areas where is there's too much space or there's not enough space so trying to control that a little bit better was what i was trying to achieve here so that i think it worked in the end you have to let me know at the end of the video um how it came across because sometimes when you're using so many of the same buildings at the same time your mind and your vision does does go a little bit off track um so um, hopefully it does still look like a, like a British build. I know some of these roads are quite blocky, um, which you may associate more with perhaps America or so, um, but it is actually like that in the UK as well. We're not always um, that far off, sort of a grid build in some respects anyway. Now these, well this, this particular brick wall and set is um, by Rick 4000. It's something I've been really looking forward to building. I remember when him and I think Sparks, um, who's part of the community as well, post up a screenshot of this bridge with a train going over it and cars going underneath and I absolutely loved it. I really was looking forward to using it myself and this seems to be the right time to do so. So um, there is actually a bridge like this and it actually looks very, very identical to that. Um, so it's really nice that we've been able to get that down and because it's more of a module build, a module bridge build, we can really make it work wherever we place it. That's what I love about these particular bridges. Unlike the bridges in the game, obviously you're restricted to how it works, how it lies on the terrain. So these bridges are fantastic and it's just, you know, I'm just clipping over a normal bridge, a normal train bridge here um, to make it look and feel more realistic and it really does change things it really really does i do have to end up changing the road direction a little bit to fit in and underneath um underneath the actual structure of the bridge to make it look a bit more realistic but really really happy of this really does become a focal point for this area as well One thing I also need to try and do in this build is adding in some of the functional buildings. So we're talking schools, police station, hospitals, fire stations, all of that. I need to kind of start adding in, not only just because it's obviously more realistic having those um, facilities in the build, but also we want to try and make the build a bit more lifelike in the actual mechanics of the game. Um, I, have, I have been using some of the fake little block um, services as well throughout the series and I've been placing those inside buildings to try and generate that but when you start having fire engines coming out of houses it doesn't really work so well so I'm going to start trying to place down things like that I certainly want to put in a nice school a school is definitely something we're going to work on um, we've got this little one here which I would probably class more as a primary school um, but what I'm going to be working on very shortly um, which will be an up and coming video so keep your eyes out for it will be a very big sort of secondary school, which um, I guess is a, a high school for you guys in America. So I wanna do that, I wanna detail that. I've got a really good idea when I come to building it to make it look really, really special. So yeah, certainly keep your eyes open for that. Other than that really guys, the rest of this episode is just detailing. We're trying to cover up some of the, uh, the white cliffs that come through because again, we're building on unlevel terrains. And when you're working with these very small houses that have the back gardens, um, which again, as I said last week, we're using because it's a lot quicker and easier to get the buildings down. We are sometimes left with a bit of a mess in terms of the terrain. Uh, normally we can get away with that, 
but because of the white cliffs of Dover theme that we're using for those beautiful white cliffs, which I'll never change in a million years, um, it does mean we have to find a way to get rid of those and hide them. So you'll see here, I actually use some of the theme paint um, to change the white to a, a dark, the dirt color. I think it's a the dirt theme that I'm using. Um, and then just adding some grass and trees around it just to sort of hide it away because it looks a lot more realistic if you're looking from above and you can see a bit of uh, sort of ground come through if it was the white cliffs obviously it'd be a little bit heavy um, and not quite as realistic as we want to achieve here so that's certainly something we are working on and that really does bring us close to the end of this episode guys um, so like I said a very productive episode in terms of building up the uh, the main tiers and the main area of this part of Shanklin. Next week we'll be working on something a little bit more unique and interesting so we'll be going back to a lot more of a heavily detailed build but nonetheless we obviously need to work on these segments throughout the series otherwise we just end up with a very simple and basic looking detailed build. So as always guys I'd like to say a big thank you to all of you who are watching the videos, who are subscribed, who are just here to follow me on the journey. Please do let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. And if you did enjoy the video and you don't want to miss the next episode, feel free to hit that sub button. And if you did enjoy the video, smash that like button now. Other than that, guys, I will catch you all in the next one. Thanks for watching and all the best.